And welcome back, footy fans, to another episode of Donnie's Disposal. I am your host, Coach Donnie Hess, here back with another VFL Vantage, the last Vantage show of the home and away season. As we have done it, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the finals of the VFL men's competition. So many rounds, holy shnikes, so many teams, so much discuss. And joining me for the insanity that is covering this competition, as per usual, my co host, Brendan Rhodes. Brendan, great to see you, sir. Great to be back with you again, Donnie. And and yet the uh, the weather's warmed up. the The rain's stopped. It's uh, not freezing like it's been for the past few weeks. And and uh, you can tell that uh, it's not quite September yet, but September's in the air. And and you can you can smell the finals, and you can smell the most important month of the year. Yeah, it's it's the most it's, it's the most lovely time of the year, and I'm not talking about Christmas for sure. <laughs> so, it is it has been it has been fantastic. What a crazy season! Twenty one rounds of football have been played. Let's jump right into it. We'll jump back to round nineteen since that's the last round that we left off talking about. We'll start off as the Western as the Footscray Bulldogs who beat the the Casey Demons in round 19, 124 68. Frankston. Beat Port Melbourne 112 85. Gold Coast Suns knock off Colbert Lions 108 74. The Brisbane Lions beat Carlton 94 71. The Southport Sharks with the upset of the round knocking off the top of the table. Werribee Tigers 61 55. Essendon beat the Bull Ants 121 77. The Hawks survive a scare from the GWS Giants 78 77. And North Melbourne get a nice win over Williamstown 75 67. But I got to go to it. We will go to. to Avalon Airport Oval and Werribee as the Sharks come down to Victoria and snatch four points from the Tigers. Yeah, 11 straight wins it was for Werribee. They they did have a few out. They've got a few injuries and they've been able to uh, get their way through them. Uh, the key the key outs there, full back and their centre half back, uh, Nathan Cooper and Nick Coglin out, out long term. And it was always probably going to come back and, and catch them at one stage. And, and Southport's just got so much quality. And, and they did it a, a low scoring game. It was, a, it was an absolute beauty of a contest, no question about it. Southport actually kicked nine behinds in the first quarter, would you believe? So, so at quarter time, the score was 0 9 to 1 1. And you and you'd think, have they blown their opportunity? Have they missed the chance to knock off the, the top team on a massive winning streak? Um, it was still tight in the second quarter. They led, they, they took the lead by six points or six behinds, as it were, 2-11 to 2-5 at halftime. Um, it was all square at three-quarter time. Um, Werribee, well, fell behind again. Southport got away, got themselves to a, to a handy lead. Werribee came charging back. And uh, and actually uh, got to got to uh, within a point, and then uh, and then Wiley Buzzer, the former Werribee star, actually took a mark and went back and kicked the goal from 55 metres out in in rainy conditions. Uh, basically lobbed it about a metre over the goal line to to seal the deal with about a minute to go. So a wonderful victory for Southport and one that basically ensured that they would finish in the top six uh, crazy crazy to think about that and then we got to go we got to up to sydney really quickly it's box hill survivor scary at, at blacktown i mean again the score is always is, is always there but again the box hill hawks and, and I, I survive a scare by the giants and this one it definitely was uh box hill led by 28 points at three quarter time it, if you follow the AFL as well, this was a very interesting stat. At three quarter time, it was uh, Box Hill was ten nine sixty nine to GWS five eleven forty one. Later on the same day in the AFL, the three quarter time score was Hawthorne ten nine sixty nine to GWS five eleven forty one. <laughs> Amazing stuff. In in both games, the Giants uh, absolutely dominated the last quarter and flew home. In the AFL, they kicked seven goals, two, and they got over the line and won by a couple of points. In the VFL, they kicked five goals, six, and they fell short by a point. 
Um, Fox Hill lost two players to season-ending injuries early on in that game, so it was a, a really brave effort to to hold on, and and it'll be a challenge for them going forward without uh, without Ben Cavara, who who did his hamstring, and uh, and Tyler Brown, who did his Achilles, and that they're two of the probably top half a dozen or eight players at Box Hill, so they're going to have to fight hard to cover them. Mm-hmm. Definitely for sure. Let's jump to it. Round twenty. We see we go to Tramway Oval in Sydney as the Swans beat beat the Collingwood Magpies in a early in a morning clash, 74-45. Carlton, get a win. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying it. Carlton, get a win in the VFL this year, 101-78 over the Geelong Cats. Essendon knock off the Gold Coast Suns by 12, 91-79. A 50-point smashing as the Lions Hammer the Giants 122 at 72. Sandringham, the Zebras get up and about against Richmond, getting a win by 33, 104 at 71. The Footscray Bulldogs knock off the Frankston Dolphins at Frankston Oval, 101 74. And a classic between two teams towards the bottom as the Coburg Lions edge out the bullies by three, 91 88. I know this may not be two teams at the top of the table, but it's always good when you get a cracker between two teams. A three three-point game between the Lions and the Bullies. The, the Battle of Bell Street, as it were, it's uh, alongside Port Melbourne versus Williamstown. It's the most famous match in the VFA, VFL, in the history of the competition, I reckon. Uh, um, these two teams, they're next-door neighbours. Uh, they're separated by about three or four kilometres down the road. They don't like each other. They, they respect each other and they and they work together but once they get on the ground they do not like each other and this this was an absolute cracking contest um there was i think Coburg got a couple of goals lead at quarter time the bull ants kicked six goals in the second quarter their best quarter of the year and got themselves a three goal lead at half time it was they still led by a goal at three quarter time and uh, yeah in just an absolute classic last quarter uh it ended up being uh, Coburg who who got a free kick. Some would say, someone of, of the red and white persuasion would say a, a controversial free kick, but but it was awarded about 35 metres out directly in front and Josh Dintinasante kicked the goal uh, with about 45 seconds to go to, to steal the victory for Coburg after they'd been behind from about halfway through the second quarter. So, so they retained the trophy. Uh, broke the Bull Ants' hearts and ensured that they would finish last, but a much, much improved season for them, for both teams, in fact. Mm -hmm. Uh, And just just quickly touching on some of the other games uh, that happened, we saw, uh, well, Sydney and Collingwood. Collingwood played actually very well, but lost three players to injury in the first half. So that that, uh, put them aside. You said a 50-point smashing for the Lions over the Giants. There was only a goal the difference in that game in time on in the third quarter. And the Lions just broke away and, and destroyed them. Um, Sandringham kept their finals hopes alive. They were up 37 to nothing against Richmond at quarter time. And try as they might, Richmond got back within a couple of goals but just couldn't catch up. But the big one there was Carlton and Geelong, as you mentioned. Uh, in round four this year, so only about four months ago, Geelong beat Carlton by 101 points. So, so for Carlton to bounce back and beat the Cats at Geelong by 23, it was a it was a massive result. And um, in in the end, it didn't cost Geelong a top four spot, but it certainly cost them a top two finish. Mm-hmm. Definitely. For sure. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the way footy goes. Sometimes you get momentum against you and it just seems to just roll like a like a stone down the hill. So we jump to it last round of the season. And unfortunately, just looking at some of the results, there wasn't a lot of drama in the final round. A couple of close ones. We'll jump through it really quickly. And the first one is far from close as Gold Coast absolutely put a whoop in. On the KC Demons, 175 to 87. Wow. Okay. Footscray Bulldogs get a win over the Sydney Swans by 37. 107 was 70. So West Williamstown Seagulls beat the Giants by 26. 113, 87. Excuse me. Southport Sharks get a nice win over the North Melbourne Roos, 100 to 83. A classic, not 
as good as the AFL, but looks like pretty good with an eight point win by calling by Collingwood 77 to 69 over the Brisbane Lions. Port Melbourne beat the Bullies by 27, 87 to 60. The Richmond Tigers get a win over the Carlton Blues, 94-85. The Geelong Cats knock off the Sandringham Zebras, 72-59. Essendon beat the Coburg Lions by 38, 111-73. And Werribee go to Box Hill and get a nice win over the Hawks, 74-63. So some close games, nothing too super, but I mean, 11-point win, 9-point win, 8-point wins. So... There's a, there's a few close ones, but enough. 88 points smashing to start off the round. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll set the I'll set the scene for people who weren't across it. Heading into the last round, Richmond was sitting in 10th spot, only needed to win to wrap up their spot in the finals. They had Sydney and Sandringham sitting half a game behind them, so those teams had to win to put the pressure on Richmond. Uh, so that was the battle for 10th spot. Um Gold Coast needed a massive win over over Casey to have a chance of running down the percentage on Southport if the Sharks had to, if the Sharks happened to lose. Uh, by the same token, Southport had to win to have a chance of finishing in fourth spot and then rely on the Cats and the Hawks going down. And then at the top of the ladder, uh, Werribee after their loss a couple of weeks earlier needed to win to stay on top, assuming that. Footscray was going if you know if Footscray had got the job done. So while there were 12 teams for 10 spots, and it was unlikely that 11 and 12 would make it due to Richmond starting favourites and Carlton having all those players out with injury in the seniors, there were everywhere in the top 10 there were positions and double chances and two home finals up for grabs. So so what we saw obviously Gold Coast got the big win that they needed to put the pressure on the Sharks. They kicked 11 goals in the third quarter, would you believe, in that game, Gold Coast. Just just remarkable. And it's something that they are capable of doing. Every now and again, they do put on a performance like that. Um, I'm pretty sure the defenders stayed in the pub for both teams. <laughs> they, they were interested in this close for 40 goals to be kicked. But it was accurate kicking too. 31 of those 40 goals were kicked from set shots. Mm-hmm. And if you take your chances, you can put a big score on the board. Yeah, you Sydney, can. Sydney bowed out, of course, weren't good enough to challenge Footscray for the second time this season. That put the Bulldogs on top of the ladder. Um, Williamstown had to win to ensure a home uh, wildcard final. Sure enough, not a problem there against the Giants. Southport got the win they needed. They moved, That took them into fourth spot on the ladder. Collingwood and Brisbane Lions, if you reckon Carlton and Geelong was an upset, was was a massive upset, well, this one was comparable. 20th place on the ladder, Collingwood, third Brisbane Lions going into that game. And, yeah, the Magpies with nothing to play for, couldn't go up, couldn't go down. The Lions had to win to have a chance of finishing in the top two and getting their two home finals. And and Collingwood came over top of them, and, and it makes you ask questions about the Lions. Uh, Port Melbourne and the Bull Ants, the only real interest over that was star full forward Billy Gowers playing his 100th game. He was one of three equal leaders in the leading goal kicker, the Frosty Miller medal. He put seven on. So so that gave him 50 for the season and basically ensured that, he'd, that he would win that medal in, in his 100th game. So a fantastic effort from him and, and gave Port Melbourne something to take out of their 150th year. Um, Richmond and Carlton, well, this ended up being a much closer game than we expected. Carlton really took it up to the Tigers and actually hit the lead with about seven or eight minutes to go um, after after trailing all day. And, and it looked like they were going to run over top of Richmond and, and really open the door for Sandringham, who were, who were playing about an hour later. But the Tigers were able to respond with a couple of quick goals, got the win, that locked up the top 10. Uh, it meant that the Sandy game against Geelong didn't mean anything for the Zebras and and the Cats got the job done there, took fourth place back off Southport. So that put Geelong into the top four. Um, Essendon, a good showing against Coburg. They were eliminated as well when, when Richmond won. They needed to win by massive numbers, so it wasn't going to happen, but they had a good win 
to finish the season. I think they finished with seven wins in their last eight games, Essendon, and ended up getting up to 11th on the ladder after being 19th at the mid midway point of the season. So that was a good effort from them. And, and Box Hill, with their injuries, um, struggled against Werribee and 11 points in the end flattered them. Werribee was the better team all day and and took that top spot back and the, and the minor premiership for the first time since... Uh, 2005, and that left the Hawks in sixth spot and facing a home elimination final in a couple of weeks. Oy, 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 oy. So much, so many different storylines there. So much to keep track normally, of. It's kind of crazy. Of course, <laughs> normally, of course, we wouldn't go through every game, but being in the last round, just about every game had something riding on it. So I thought it pertinent that we that we have a have a good look at them all. No, nah, actually, it's the same thing. I'm also, I'm also trying to trying to get together the the almost overly complicated, but makes sense because of 21 teams in the competition finals bracket, which which we will we will discuss here in a little bit. Since we will we will run through it and and see how good my expert is on tipping the finals because as we've kind of discussed off mic is that we have gotten to wild card round seven ten and eight and nine we'll play here in a little bit but uh we'll go through the burning questions i mean i kind of made it really simple just because i mean there's really one storyline that i want to talk about and that is where be are the minor premiers i mean they were the best team pretty much the most of the year they had a couple of hiccups i mean it's going to happen so they won the minor premiers. Are they the favorites to get the flag that they felt just short of getting last year? They're, they're certainly not as clear as, as you would think, uh, having been basically on top of the ladder since since the midway point of the season. They, they are a very, very good team. They they should get a couple of their key players back after after this having this week off. They had a they had a week off in round twenty. They played in round twenty one. They'll have a week off for the wild card round. If they can win their qualifying final, that'll give them another week off, and we'll put them in in really good shape. And they'll be able to. I believe they'll get. Um, I believe they'll get uh, Coglin, who I mentioned earlier, should be back for the qualifying final. And Cooper is a chance, but is probably more likely to be available for the following week. So. If they can get safely through to the preliminary final, then they are going to take a power of beating, no question about that. But you can never underestimate um, Foot, Footscray, who were nine and zero, remember at the start of the season. They are they are on fire at the moment, and some of the AFL talent they've got uh, in that side, they're they're probably probably I would say if if you looked at the bookies markets, which I haven't done. They would probably be the favourites. Uh, the Brisbane Lions have managed to hold on to third spot on the ladder with the other results going in their favour, despite that that loss to Collingwood. So, so they'll they'll travel for the qualifying final, but will have another a home final in either the second or third week. And I think their best is definitely good enough. Um, I had them in the grand final pre-season. Uh, Geelong is an interesting one. I had them in the bottom four at the start of the year. So they've, they've can completely blown my predictions out of the water. So you, you must request, uh, accept and, sorry, respect is the word I'm looking for, what they're capable of. I picked Southport at the start of the year. I'm not sure they're quite strong enough. I, I think there might be a couple of holes there, but uh, especially given that they'll have to play three games on a on the road in a row after the elimination final, uh, Box Hill always dangerous, always very hard to beat in big matches. But those those couple of key injuries in the last couple of weeks will really hurt. And well, 175 points Gold Coast kicked last week, so you can never underestimate them. And then uh, then Williamstown capable of beating anyone, but probably. Aren't in the aren't in good enough form at the moment. Richmond, amazing effort to make the finals for them. Um, after all the injuries that they've had at senior level all year, I'm not sure they can go a lot further. But they've been proving me wrong all season. And Frankston, well, making the finals for the first time in 16 years. This, along with Richmond, is the story of the year. It is absolutely wonderful to see them. 
it's a massive shame for Frankston supporters that the, the way the fixture has fallen, that they've got to play this final in Queensland. But um, they're going to have a big function down at the down at the club on Saturday, and and all the supporters are going to get down there. And and yeah, if you're anywhere near Frankston, um, yeah, get get down to Frankston at uh, at twelve o'clock on Saturday, and uh, and because the atmosphere will be absolutely rocking there. But uh, yeah, it would be a major upset if they were to beat the Suns in Queensland. Definitely for sure. And again, it's it's gonna be a crazy finals. As soon as you think you gotta figure it out, you, you you just have absolutely no clue. It is all a guessing game. So my other question, you kind of ran through it a little bit, but I, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of pin you down here. If not Werribee, what team do you think could be the spoil to the Tigers flag content chances? Right now, for me, that is Footscray. As I as I just mentioned, they they've they they won their first nine games. They had a little bit of a hiccup through the middle of the year. They're back on they're back on song, and they've got they've got uh, probably four or five blokes in their side that would play AFL football for fifteen other clubs. So they they are they are all class. They they've just got strength on every line, and they and uh, yeah, I I think probably they're the form team of the competition at the moment. Um, definitely not prepared to rule out the Brisbane Lions, uh, but yeah, I think the Premier probably comes from those three. Uh, the, the Suns have to win five sudden death finals in a row if they're going to defend their Premiership, which which would be a superhuman effort. Mm-hmm. Yep. And just looking at it, it, it's not going to be an easy haul. In fact, that's kind of a great transition because we got to predict the finals. I think I've got it figured out correctly. So, Brendan, we, we will definitely have to check my work to be sure this is correct. So, this week we, we have the play-in games, and again, as we kind of talked, as we kind of talked about, and Mike is the fact that I'm starting to see some of the Victorian media start to go, "OMG, the VFL's playing a a play-in game because the AFL is discussing potentially having a wild card round," which. As somebody who loves the AFLW, annoys the crap out of me because now this takes away the free air if that does happen. So, again, personal personal gripe there. Personal gripe. That, there. That, that's that's another discussion. I, I believe the AFLW should be playing all year alongside the men. But that, as I said, that's another discussion that we can yep. that we can we, have at another time. And we and we've had that discussion too. And I've and I've given yeah. and I've given my reasons for why I I personally I don't think it's a good idea because it takes I think it takes away more from the AFLW than it actually helps them personally. But that's just me again. <laughs> all right, let's yeah, jump yeah. to let's jump to it. We we will te- we will test my we will test my work here 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 Brendan. So we have the play in game. So the two games for this particular weekend, we see the Gold Coast Suns at People First Stadium hosting the Frankston Dolphins. As you said, the Dolphins get back to the finals. Unfortunately, they got a jaunt up to Queensland. So we'll start off there. Suns Dolphins. As much as I would love to see the Dolphins get a win here, I think Gold Coast too good at home. Agree with everything you said there. Without any disrespect to the reigning premiers, um, it, it would be a wonderful story if the Frankston Football Club could go past this weekend under new coach uh, Jackson Kornberg, who ironically is uh, one uh, is a past coach of the Suns. He led the Suns to the preliminary final in 2022 and was involved in the was still involved in the program last year in 2023 when they won the premiership. Uh, before returning to Victoria and taking on a three-year contract at at Frankston, uh, so he so if anyone knows everything there is to know about the Gold Coast Suns, it's going to be Jackson Kornberg. But um, they they will give absolutely everything they've got. But I just don't think they've got enough to beat to beat the Suns. They they lost to them by about six goals at Frankston probably about seven or eight weeks ago. Uh, they were competitive for most of the game, but the Suns just have too many weapons for me. Mm-hmm. And then the other game of this particular weekend will be Williamstown at DSV Stadium hosting the Richmond Tigers. An interesting matchup here. Who do you like? Again, Richmond have spent the whole whole season defying the odds. Um, they went down to Williamstown on this ground about a month ago in a low-scoring game. Uh, I think Williamstown... If they can get their get their full strength team on the park, they've they've had a, a 
pretty ordinary run themselves with soft tissue injuries, 19 of them for the year, calves and hamstrings and quads and that sort of thing. And they haven't been able to get their best team on the park. Um, I think they're I think they're vulnerable to to being got by Richmond for that reason. But um, I'm going for Williamstown simply because I never pick against Williamstown at DSV Stadium. <laughs> well, at least you at least you, and have... you never should pick against them at DSV Stadium. At least you have a trend for sure. So let's jump to it. So with that win, if I if I do my bracket correctly, that would be Werribee will play Geelong in the first qualifying final, where Brisbane and Footscray would play in the other qualifying final. The elimination matchups would be Southport hosting Williamstown and would be Box Hill hosting the Gold Coast Suns. That's the easy part of this particular finals. It's everything else that gets kind of he gets kind of carry. So I want to be sure that I do this correctly. So we'll start you've off. Got, you've got them correct. The, the highest, the highest ranked winner will play the lowest, the highest ranked wildcard winner, which in this case is Gold Coast, would play the lowest ranked elimination finalist, Box Hill. Mm-hmm. So, so that is Box Hill versus Gold Coast. And yes, you're right. The the highest ranked elimination final team, Southport, plays the lowest ranked wildcard, which is Williamstown, and mm-hmm. that would be at Southport. So um, the only the only one that you had the other way around was you had Brisbane playing Footscray. That game would be at Footscray at the Mission Witten Oval. Oh yes, with, yes. Uh, with Footscray having having finished second. Yep, yep. I had and I had it written down. I had it written down here. Correct. I had it written down here correctly. I just said Brizzy first. So, all right. So we will go to the qualifying and elimination finals. We'll start off top of the table. Where it be v Geelong? Can the Cats pull the upset, or are the Tigers just too good? They've done it before on this ground. But no, I, I certainly do think that the that Werribee is probably just that next step just ahead, especially if they get a couple of their their key players back. I think they should be too good for Geelong on, on this occasion. All right, we will stay in the qualifying finals. Footscray hosting the Brisbane Lions at Footscray, Footscray hosting the Brizzy Lions. Who do you see moving on to the preliminary final, Footscray, or do the Lions go on the road and steal a preliminary final spot? Well, this is this is an interesting one because uh, I've just got through saying that Footscray is the form team of the competition and and is probably the team to beat right now. But Brisbane Lions beat Footscray at the Witten Oval convincingly mid-season. So the ground and the trip will not hold any fears for them. Um, they will also be hungry having capitulated against Collingwood and then uh, and then and then having a week off to stew on that. So you you've got to pick Footscray, I think at the Witten Oval, but uh, it certainly wouldn't surprise me if uh, if Brisbane Lions got this win and basically threw the entire final series on its head. Okie dokie. So we'll move Footscray into the preliminary final. Brizzy will stay in the semi-final. We'll we'll first see who faces Geelong, if I do this correctly. Southport v. Williamstown. Who do you see facing Geelong in a semi-final? I think Southport. I think Southport beats Williamstown up there. The see the Seagulls are good enough, but I don't think they're playing well enough, as as I said, um to go into state. They, they, they've been up to Southport this year. They got beaten by eight goals. So they'll know a little bit about it, the trip and what's required. But I, I think the Sharks at home should be too good in that one. Okie dokie. And then the other, sim, the other elimination final sees the Suns come down to Victoria to face the Box Hill Hawks. Can the Suns start a run of epic proportions and knock off the Hawks? Or can the Hawks end the defending Premier's chances at a back-to-back they definitely can the suns definitely can and the hawks definitely can this is this is a flip of the coin job uh simple simple fact of the matter there um box hill if i remember rightly had a good win over the suns earlier on in the year someone will someone will tell me i'm wrong on that one (laughs) but um yeah i i think I think the the injuries to key players that the Hawks have had will will be an issue. The the reason I'm going to pick Box Hill in this one is because that club, both Box Hill and Hawthorne, 
has a way of of rising to to honor its great players it, it's real stalwarts and this game is the 100th vfl game for the captain callum porter and there, there's no bigger there's no bigger um heart and soul player at this club over the past five or six years than callum porter so they so aside from the fact that it's a sudden death final on their home deck they will be absolutely jumping out of their skins to to honor to honor cal porter and if they can find a way to control the sun's scoring then they will win um the suns have the ability to score 175 points they also have the ability to score 50. Mm-hmm. so you just don't know which suns team is going to turn up um yeah. yeah so i i'm i'm sticking with the boring old method of picking the higher ranked team before and, Callum Porter and I decided to go through just to test your theory they did play once time well only once earlier this season but it wasn't people's first it was not Box Hill was not the home side in that particular matchup okay. Gold, Gold Coast, Coast getting the Chalkies 88 45 a 43 point win for the Sun in that one but again Box Hill at home in Victoria Suns already have played a, a round I think the first quarter could be interesting for Box Hill because sometimes playing a team that's coming off a game previously, but I think you may have better legs come the fourth quarter. So I I would probably, if I was tipping, I'd probably go with you with Box Hill on that one. So we will test to see if I am correct on this one. So Southport will play Geelong in Geelong and Box Hill would then play Brizzy in Queensland, correct? I believe that is correct. Okay. So one v one v four matches with five v eight. So okay. so yes, so the winner of the five v eight game would play the loser of the one v four game. So yes, that would be uh, that would be Geelong versus Southport and Brisbane Lions versus Box Hill. Yes. So I did well my so I did my AFL bracket correctly because <laughs> I'm like it's pretty. I'm yes. pretty so sure it's so all, it, in, all it is is the wild card. Seven, we're in a eight, normal eight. AFL top eight. Yeah. Uh, oh, after yeah. the so, first week of the finals, after the wild cards were in a normal top eight system. Okay, and that's what I, and that's what, how exactly how I wrote it out. So I'm pretty sure I have this right. Okay, so we'll jump into the semi-final rounds again. I try to be sure that I say it in correct Aussie terms for me. This quarterfinals, but that's just my American brain here. So semi-final round sees Geelong host Southport, most likely at GMHBA Stadium, unless something's crazy. Unless something crazy happens, your thoughts on this one? Can the Sharks? get a second win in a row and move on to a preliminary final or do the cats bounce back after a loss in the qualifying final? Again, definitely yes on both counts. Um, this is why it's such a, such an exciting final series is coming up. I've picked the higher ranked team every, every game so far, but I've already said it wouldn't surprise me to see the Lions beat Footscray. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Suns beat the Hawks, Richmond beat Williamstown. Um, it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see the Sharks go down and beat the Cats at the Cattery. Um, if anything, if anything, Geelong has shown vulnerability on their home deck over the past couple of years, and uh, and I think in in recent times they've had the they had the loss to Carlton a couple of weeks ago. The game before that, I think they drew with Footscray in in torrential rain. So so they're not in great form at home, Geelong. They've 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 done enough to earn their spot in the top four. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna pending pending uh, selection and fitness. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the sharks can do this. I'm gonna say the sharks can go go to the cattery and beat them. All right, so we have our first uh, we have our first upset moving into the preliminary final against Footscray. South will take on Footscray in the second preliminary final. Let's see who Werribee gets. Box Hill versus the Brisbane Lions up in Queensland. Who do you like? Brisbane Lions. Um, as I said, I, I picked the I picked the Hawks in a in a real flip of the coin game to beat the Suns. Uh, I don't think they can go to Queensland and beat the Lions. So I, I wouldn't, it, it would be amazing if we saw a Q clash in the semi final between the Lions and the Suns. And, and that's where the Lions would be nervous because they haven't beaten the Suns in their past five games. So they're, they're probably hoping that uh, if they can't beat Footscray, of course, mm. they would be probably hoping that uh, the Box Hill gets through. Um, 
So no, I, I think I think the Brisbane Lions would beat Box Hill Hawks up in up in Queensland. All right, a couple of beauties here in the preliminary final. We'll start off top of the table. We will give Werribee their chocolates. They take on the Brisbane Lions in 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 your tipping. Brizzy Lions, Werribee Tigers. Can the Tigers get back to a second consecutive grand final, or does Brisbane end the minor premier season? I believe that they would be back to full strength by now, Werribee, or very close to it, barring any anything else going wrong. This is actually this, if it happens, would actually be a repeat of last year's preliminary final. Mm-hmm. Werribee beat the Bris knocked the Brisbane Lions out in the prelim to make that premiership decider. Uh last year they beat them by about five goals. And and uh, at Avalon Airport Oval, I'd be I'd be backing them to do it again. Um but again, that is that is dependent on them getting their their full strength team back and the and the Lions. Uh, well, obviously their availabilities depend a lot on what's going on at AFL level too. Uh, they do have the best player in the competition in the reigning listed medalist Jared Lyons, uh, who is probably well and truly among the favourites to win it again. Uh, I will. Yeah, I will say Werribee will win at home and go through to the grand final for the second year in a row. All right. And All right. let's see who's going to join them. Will it be Footscray, their fellow Victorian team, or will the Queensland side of Southport throw a giant monkey wrench into that into those scenes? South, Footscray, who do you like facing Werribee in the grand final? I think this is where my uh, my preseason tip probably falls over. Uh, I, I stuck with I stuck with North Melbourne right throughout the VFLW finals and and it paid off. Um, I couldn't see the Sharks being able to uh, like being able to what have what have we said beat uh, beat Geelong at Geelong and then come back and beat Footscray Footscray even if they did. And then come back again and beat Werribee at Werribee. That would be one of the one of the greatest premierships of all time if they were able to do it uh, from from fifth on the ladder. I I think that um, I think that Footscray should be too strong on their on their home deck there, and and the Sharks will fall just short. All righty, so that is an all Victorian grand final in the VFL this year as we see Werribee take on Footscray in the grand final. Can the Tigers get the one step they couldn't last year, or does Footscray again leave Werribee the bridesmaids? Got no idea. <laughs> I <laughs> love the exactly, honesty. <laughs> and that is exactly what you want going into a grand final. You want no one to have any idea who's going to win. Um, you've got a you've got a Footscray team who who, as I've said earlier on in the chat, are all class. They're 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 a brilliant team. They've got stars everywhere. How many of them are still playing at this stage depends, obviously, on whether the Western Bulldogs are still going at AFL level. That could that can completely throw things throw things out the window. We, we know that the Bulldogs usually um, try to win everything that they can, rather than rather than putting their top players, you know, in in cotton wool and not dropping blokes back. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, not putting players out for operations and that sort of thing. While that while they're alive, I think they'll still have a crack at it. But it might if, if the Western Bulldogs are out, then it might affect qualifications. Players that may not be then eligible to play for Footscray because they played too many games for the Western Bulldogs throughout the course of the season. It's a it's a very convoluted um, qualification process and a lot of rules around whether you can and can't play. Um, so for that reason, I'm going. I'm going for the fairy tale and the 31 year drought to to break, and I and I think Werribee can get it done. It'll be it'll be so fantastic if they do. It, it, just because they they came so close, and the fact that they're an unattached side for them to beat a league that is 85 percent AFL reserve squads, it would be a fantastic story to see Werribee get it done. So I'm exactly. I again, will. If, again, Western Bulldogs are still alive in the AFL. That that tip would flip, and I'd be thinking Footscray would be very, very hard to beat. 
Mm -hmm. No, I'm completely with you on that one, but I'll be, I'll be secretly barracking for Werribee in that one, because just the story to see an un unattached club to get all the way to the grand final and get a win would be fantastic. They, they fought valiantly last year against the gold coast side. That was just so dominant. You just could not see it happening any other ways, but it, it's going to be an incredible VFL finals i cannot wait i'm gonna be glued to it can't, can't wait just because it'll give me some extra stuff to watch so cannot wait brendan as usual absolutely magnificent i love chatting vfl footy with you we also like talking swans off mic a little bit just because that is our mutual love for sure but brendan as per usual fantastic thank you again so much for hopping on and being the co-host again this season no worries. Thanks very much, Donnie. I'm sure we'll have a have a chat again before the end of the year and we'll see how it goes. And uh, if you if you get the chance to try and work out how, how to sync it all up, you'll be able to hear myself and the rest of the team throughout the final series uh, on caseyradio.com.au. I'll be for the first time in five years, I'll be able to call right throughout the final series. So you'll be you'll be able to hear us uh, on the Internet through through Casey Radio. And if you can if you can sync it up to the to the to the stream then that would be perfect but yeah so see, see how it goes and and uh, yeah it's a final series i simply can't wait for yeah simply cannot wait we will do one more show for the vfl vantage for this season we will review the men's finals and kind of a all vfl vflw season review at the end after the grand final has been played and won later on a few weeks from now so this will be the the penultimate vfl vantage for this particular season again as per usual stellar chatting with you brendan so that'll do it for another episode of vfl vantage here on the donnie's disposals youtube channel again if you like what you are listening to please like and subscribe always love talking footy and we'll be back with more footy coverage again sandful and waffle finals about ready to get started they have one more round left most likely i will be reviewing with my lovely co-hosts over there for both of those particular competitions mid next week so those will all be out and then finals hits for all competitions afl vfl sample and waffle will all be in finals just in time for the aflw to get started cannot wait the footy is absolutely spectacular so that'll do it for another episode of donnie's disposals we'll be back again with more footy coverage very very soon